introduce my other counterparts who are here with me, Commander Peter Sikora of the Australian Federal Police and Acting Regional Commander Matt O'Connor of the Australian Border Force. So I will be speaking first and then uh, Commander Sikora and then uh, Regional Commander O'Connor. Um, what I will be speaking to you today is well as the South Australian Police representative on the National Serious Organised Crime Coordination Committee and I'm also the chair of the National Methamphetamine Strategy Group. Now they are national groups that come together to combat serious and organised crime and Operation Vitreous is the operational arm of the strategy group. Uh, I'll provide you with details of recent activity that has occurred nationally at mail exchanges under Operation Vitreous. Uh, what I will do is provide you with details of recent activity that was conducted at national mail exchanges under Operation Vitreous. Over a number of weeks, each state and territory police agency, in conjunction with the Australian Federal Police, Australian Border Force, Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission and Austrac, conducted X-ray scanning of state and international mail items. What was discovered was a disturbing and alarming array of illicit substances and illegally obtained prescription medications. In total, 62 different illicit substances were seized by police, with methamphetamine, cocaine and cannabis featuring as the largest illicit drug seizures. Law enforcement agencies are working together every day to combat the scourge of illicit drugs and this operation of the, is one of the many strategies employed to detect and disrupt the illicit drug market. The abuse of illicit drugs, particularly methamphetamine, is a driver for many types of crime as organised crime groups exploit the vulnerability of illicit drug users. Whilst this is an example of national law enforcement activity, each day authorities are actively pursuing organised crime groups and individuals who seek to profit through the trade of illicit drugs and prey on those many vulnerable people who suffer a drug addiction. The impact on these people, their family, friends and work colleagues is well documented. And for that reason, our pursuit of offenders is relentless and as police agencies, we will continue to work together on enforcement, intelligence collection, education and awareness of the harm caused by illicit drugs. This operation should serve as a warning to those who trade in illicit drugs and seek to use the mail service to conduct their business and also to those who may be persuaded to receive mail items on behalf of someone else. Severe state and Commonwealth penalties apply to persons convicted of trading or trafficking in illicit drugs. As a result of this operation there have been about 50 arrests and reports across the country associated with these seizures and many other investigations are ongoing and it's also likely that further charges will be laid. What this data has done is provided a snapshot of illicit material being seized through the Postal Service and the numbers of drug seizures are really point in time and statistics will vary state by state and are not necessarily indicative of uh, police activity that goes on a daily basis. Uh, the statistics do vary, uh, you'll see some variances between states uh, and that's not a reflection of uh, state commitment, that's more a reflection of just this snapshot of the point in time. What this operation has shown is that people are prepared to take the risk and trade in illicit drugs and illegally obtain prescription medication and in doing so take the risk of being apprehended and prosecuted. And uh, as I said, we will be relentless in our pursuit of these people and uh, even small amounts can face prosecution for people who will take the risk of putting those types of items through the mail system. I'll now hand over to Commander Socorro. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, what this week of action has shown is that we really need a national approach uh, to tackle drug importation uh, into Australia and a real coordinated approach at that. I mean, this is the first week of action undertaken by multiple agencies, and given the, the seizures that we've had and the results that we've had, and particularly the disruption, uh, it definitely won't be the last week of action that we will see in uh, this year or, or the coming years as well. When we look at the, the information that we've gleaned so far and the drugs coming into the country. It's, it's all about um, you know, high frequency and uh, low volume in regards to the drugs that come in. And that causes a real significant threat here because it inundates our resources and how we tackle the problem. But where, the way we look at that is from a cumulative aspect and the threat that that possesses. And it's that accumulation or that aggregation of that drug data that we get uh, and the persons that we arrest that lets us really inform the picture into the future of what we need to address this problem. 
Um, you've seen the results in the seizures of over 82 kilos of, of narcotics. Um, there's other uh, items that have been seized as well. We've had a number of arrests. There's been significant disruption. But the important part about this going into the future is the intelligence. And the intelligence is from that cumulative aspect that we get from um, uh, the drugs that we seized and the information that was on those parcels. So the intelligence is about what areas do we need to concentrate that have a drug problem? What people do we need to concentrate on that are actually distributing and peddling their wares uh, to the society? What areas are we actually looking at that need to be targeted? Uh, with that information, and you overlay that with the information that are provided by you, your local service uh, area commands, uh, local crime areas across the states, over the, overlay that with the intelligence from the ACIC, from Austrac, from our international partners, we can then form a real clear picture as to who's responsible for the importation of drugs, but also the distribution of the drugs that, that are occurring nationally and particularly here in South Australia and in Adelaide as well. The other important aspect to this is um, the drugs are coming in obviously through the mail system and they're coming in from overseas. Now whether it's from people purchasing it on the dark net or the dark web or through other means. But our aim is to actually tackle this at the source. So the information and the intelligence that we've gleaned through this operation now allows the AFP, through its international network, to go out to our partners and actually try to stem the drugs from its source. And we're looking at places such as Europe, uh, particularly Asia and the like, where these drugs are coming from, and we'll be able to take some action there so we ensure um, that uh, these drugs don't enter our country. Um, lastly, can I just say thank you very much for all those involved in this operation. Like I said, a national coordinated response is really needed for this. Uh, without the, the help of the State and Territory Police, without the help of ABF, ACIC, Austrac and other partners, um, the success of this operation uh, wouldn't be able to be seen, and nor future operations either. So thank you very much to all. Uh, today I highlight the contribution of the Australian Border Force in the National Week of Action against the domestic trafficking of methamphetamines and other illicit substances. During the Week of Action, the ABF deployed its highly trained officers, its mobile X-ray vans and its dog detector units at mail gateways in support of our law enforcement partners. The screenings activity, as has been highlighted here today, was significant in detecting sizeable uh, quantities of illicit substances. The operation highlighted the effectiveness of law enforcement agencies working together. During financial year 2016-17, the ABF has made about 75,000 detections of prohibited imports at international mail gateways. Uh, that equates to about 200 detections per day. The ABF is pleased to support law enforcement partners to also stop the spread of illicit substances within Australia itself. In cooperation with both domestic and international partners, the ABF has detected about 16 tonnes of illicit drugs and precursors in the last two years alone. This has resulted in significant financial loss and disruption to organised crime syndicates. It can only be stressed that stopping drugs reaching the streets through operations such as Op Vitreous serves, saves countless lives from adverse effects within the Australian community. The intelligence gathered during the week of action will lead to more targeting opportunities for the ABF to detect and disrupt drugs reaching our streets into the future. The ABF is committed to protecting the Australian community from the damage of methamphetamines and other illicit substances. Thank you. Uh, at this stage, no, we're keeping tight on the, the actual numbers um, because some of these investigations are still ongoing. Um, but suffice to say, 50 across the nation and uh, each state has made a contribution to that number. So how did the process work? I mean, just to check here, it talks about that it was looked at over two days. So did each state have a two-day period? Yes, that that's correct. Yeah. Um, how much does that suggest is sort of coming in all the time, this is what was found in a, in a two-day period? Uh, quite a lot. Absolutely. Uh, and this, um, as has already been explained, the intelligence gathering factor of this is, is just as important as the actual seizures, seizures themselves. So that's not to say that this is all that's occurring, uh, as has already been mentioned by Border Force and the Australian Federal Police. This, these are ongoing daily activities. But from a national perspective, this really gave us a very good snapshot of what's occurring nationally uh, and also some of the levels that uh, people go to to bring these drugs in. What, what are some of the ways that, obviously it's not just an envelope, what are some of the ways people are trying to sneak them in? 
Oh, well, mo mostly we're talking through packaging. Um, you know, it can be very rudimentary, uh, and I guess the, the hope is that it's not detected. Well, on this occasion it was detected and it was seized and people were arrested. So, as I've uh, already mentioned, that risk is evident. And if you're prepared to take the risk, we'll also be prepared to uh, face the penalty that comes with uh, your activity. Are these, are these results able to show how much of this uh, certainly that intelligence picture is very important. Uh, there's no doubt the source of many of these drugs is overseas, um, but there's also a market internally uh, for people that bring it from overseas and then deal within a, within a domestic market. So it, it's certainly a mixture, um, but the intelligence picture that's gathering uh, is making it a lot clearer of uh, the source of these drugs and some of the networks that are involved. Do you think people in the past have thought that this was a way that they could get away with moving drugs around the country? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and really that's what this activity is all about. This is a, a nationally coordinated activity. Each uh, state and Commonwealth agency plays their part. And uh, really this is about dis disrupting that drug network that exists through the mail exchange. Is there a risk, is there a risk though that you just, they just choose other means now and you just push it into other areas by announcing it as a, as a sort of a major focus? Oh, well in doing this I guess it's about deterring people. Um, if they move to other means, that's for us to sort out the intelligence. And this is just one of the many, many strategies that we've got going to really detect and disrupt that illicit drug market. So this is not the only thing we're relying on. Um, this obviously is a key feature. And, and in highlighting this, we're hopefully highlighting to people the risk involved. If you're prepared to uh, face the penalty uh, and with this sort of activity, then, yeah, keep doing it. And I have a question of people receiving... Are the penalty given for people receiving a small amount? Uh, so that it's posted to them, can they face penalties even if it's just being sent to them? Uh, they could, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's the offences for traffic in distributing are what we have to prove. So sometimes that's based on weight and sometimes it's based on other evidence. So uh, it's really a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, the legislation does slightly vary in each state as well. Uh, but certainly the penalties are quite severe uh, in trafficking drugs. Can I ask the question to Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Um, you were saying that you uh, are asking for a national, um, a national focus on this. This is obviously just been one week. What needs to happen in order for that to occur? Is that up to the government or is that something that you, ahead of the AFP, can, can organise? Oh, that na national focus has already started through the uh, amphetamine strategy that's happening nationally. There is a national response already. Um, but the thing is, what we need to do is just maintain the rage on that as well. And I think, you know, the intelligence that we'll get out of this process will probably guide us into the future and what we need to do and where we need to target our activities into, into the future. What more would you need, though, to keep this going? Obviously, it was just two, a two-day focus in every state. Yep. Two days is great, but what happens for the rest of the year? What else would you need to keep it going? As part of well, the thing is you can't run operations like this on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis because they are quite resource intensive. What these operations want to show us is exactly what happens in a point of time and what we can do to address the problem that we have. Uh, the statistics that you see or that have been produced here today can vary you know, tomorrow if we were to run this same operation again. What we need to do is actually look at the intelligence and how we can disrupt these syndicates into the future. A lot of this is about the examination of the criminal element, who is actually responsible for it, and then us targeting them, not through the mail system, but through other means that uh, we can actually arrest them and make sure that their supply doesn't get out into the community. I mean, this is a roadmap in terms of where the, the, the biggest stockpile is, yeah? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's what we need to do. And, and we know that the stockpile is overseas somewhere, so we, we need to, to tackle that. We need to cut off the head of the dragon before it actually gets here into Australia. Um, that and that's the challenge for us. You say that figures can obviously change day to day, but is it a bit concerning the figures in Queensland in particular? Um, no, because like I said, and I think uh, Assistant Commissioner Duval said as well, this is a snapshot in a point of time. So if you did this again next week, you'd probably see those figures would be skewed totally differently to another state as well. I mean, you have to have a look at the situation in the state at that time. Um, is there an event going on? Is there something within the economy that's actually, um, you know, making people uh, want to use drugs more than any specific other state? You know, you've got major events and the like. Uh, but like I say, if you took another uh, snapshot uh, tomorrow, you'd, you'd get very different statistics.
you say that there's sophisticated sort of concealment techniques. Can you give us some examples? Um, I mean, uh, ABF will know a lot more about that, but what we've seen as the AFP, um, through the mail system, we've seen things in food products, we've seen it in toys, um, you know, just normal cards, in machine parts, uh, you name it, anything that people can send in the mail, there's always a way that it can be secreted within a particular part. You'd like to add that? Yeah. I mean, that's true. Yeah, ABF sees concealments in every item that can be manufactured from the packaging itself within the cardboard you know uh, 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 cartons themselves to you know toys to to foodstuffs like like has been mentioned so, so is there any one example that stuck out? Uh, not that I can recall in in this case so. this gives um, total seizures was um, it was mentioned that a lot of them are uh, sort of low volume, high frequency. Were there any particularly large seizures within this? Uh, might refer to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the largest seizure was an eight kilogram seizure of methamphetamine. Uh, so again, it, it shows that um, it does vary. Uh, certainly, as has already been mentioned, small volumes uh, or large volumes and uh, small amounts is one tactic. The other one is send it through in a big amount and take the risk. Extremely brazen, yeah, absolutely. And uh, that is eight kilos of drugs that won't hit the streets anymore. And there's a person who faces potential prosecution uh, for trafficking in drugs. So, as I said, the, the risk is high, uh, and we're prepared to keep putting in the effort uh, to put those people who do that type of behaviour well and truly in the spotlight. Is Oral questions, please. Is part of the operation when you sort of sense or see that something might be going somewhere is monitoring it over a period of time? And of watching people, and I mean, I know you can't give away all your operational secrets, but is that part of it, sort of seeing how it's working, just unless they smash a wider sort of... Oh, absolutely. The, the intelligence gathering out of this type of activity is just as important, as I said, as the seizures itself, to get a really good idea of uh, what's going on, who's doing it, who might be controlling it, and as I said, this is just one of a number of operational strategies that we would deploy on any given day, and this is two days of uh, a big period. Um, but certainly from a national point of view, this is very much what's already been mentioned. The national cooperation and coordination that goes on across the country is, is really important to really combating what we see as a, a, a very insidious offence. That's difficult or easy, easy arrest. Can you, can you expect, how many more can you expect? Oh, these, these are ongoing investigations, so it's difficult to put a number on that, I'm afraid. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen.